Okay, so I've run into a bit of a problem while editing. I'm looking at this photo and I think it's cool, but at the same time, I think it could be way better. And I figured I might as well just show you how I might think of trying to make it better. So yeah. And if everything goes well, I'm gonna turn this photo into this. All right, so yeah, like I said, I've got this photo right here that I took and edited and like I said, the edit so far is, it's okay, like I don't, I don't mind it, I could post it, but the sky isn't something that I wanted, and although it's kind of cool, I just feel like it doesn't work with this photo, or at least what I want to see it to be, so yeah, I don't know, I'm going to try doing something to make it look cool, so yeah. So yeah, what I'm going to do is probably take it into Photoshop and then see what I can do from that. Alright, so now that I've got it pulled up into Photoshop, I think... What I usually do is like do a blurred background or something, but I think for this one, I think I know what to do. So firstly, I'm probably gonna make a duplicate layer of the background. And then with that, I'm gonna add a motion blur. And with this, you can see that it's sort of obviously added motion blur to the photo. And it sounds weird because even though this photo doesn't have any movement going in or any motions going on, I added a motion blur. So I've set it to obviously 90 degrees because I want to just go up and down and I've set it to as high as I can go. And I'm just going to click OK and then I'm actually going to do it again to make it go even further. And then maybe, maybe one more time. Now it's, now it's just crazy. Cool. Alright, so now all that I'm left with is just a bunch of blurred lines. But what I'm actually going to do with them is actually going to drag them up just slightly. And I'm going to decrease the opacity just so I can see what's behind it. And then I'm going to turn this layer into a layer mask and then I'm going to brush out where it's covering the buildings. Now when you're doing layer mask, the best way to sort of think about it is black is erasing and white is coloring in. Pretty much if you look in the layer mask here, whatever's black is obviously not showing. So what I'm doing is just removing all the buildings from that layer. This just takes a bit of, you know, finessing. Layer masking can be a bit tedious sometimes. It does take a lot of time and just, you know, really careful brushing. But, you know, it's just... If it's for the photo, I'm down, I'm down for it. <laughs> Alright, now once you're done and you want to check if the mask is all good, just select it and bring that opacity way up. Okay, and obviously you can see it's not perfect. <laughs> it's definitely not perfect. No, no way. And so now that we've got the opacity back, we can select the mask, make sure we have a white brush on, and then just brush in back what we need to. And once again, this is just going to take some more time. <laughs> Alright, so I think I'm pretty much done now, so all we need to do is save, and yeah, that automatically brings it back into the Lightroom and you can just do any further editing that you need. So yeah, we pretty much started with an alright city shot, and then added a base edit through Lightroom, and then I decided to mess around and see what I could do in Photoshop, and this is what I've got. This is a technique that's usually used for panning shots to make the motion look even more exaggerated, but I added it here because I kind of want that futuristic look of, you know, the lights going up. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, whether you think it's cooler or more futuristic, or if not, just let me know. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to see this photo, check out my Instagram, at tobytrin underscore, give it a like, give it a follow, and obviously if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, and subscribe if you want, and as always, continue to create. I'll see you in the next